Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now. Hey, I'm pumped for this conversation. Three times Super Bowl champ, okay? Not one time, not two time. Mm -hmm. Three times Super Bowl champ, rushing touchdown leader in 2016. Nine seasons in the NFL, played for the Bucks, Patriots, Steelers, Eagles, Lions. He played with Wentz and Peterson. Excited to chat with him about how he felt about that. Also played alongside the GOAT. Tom Brady, and I do believe against the Colts, like I just said, he ran for maybe 250 yards against us in one night. Ladies and gentlemen, OG, LeGarrette Blunt. Yeah! Yeah! Thank you guys for having me on, man. Thank you. How are you doing, man? How, how's life? Are you officially retired? I, I assume that's the case, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm officially retired. I think I need to make it. I get asked that so much because <laughs> people want me to come back and play so bad. But, uh, um, I'm, I need to I need to put an Instagram post out there with, with my retirement and a video and everything. <laughs> you should you should ride off in the sunset. And to be honest, when I retired, I didn't know how to do it either because nobody talks about it. Because there isn't in the NFL, there isn't like a full process that you go through. It's literally just like, uh, yeah, I, I'm retired. Okay, um, you just what did you hate what was going on above you there? You didn't announce like the way the That's what it seems like. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> You just announced it is what it seems like. Because, I mean, I think Akeem Tlaib did his on his Call to the Booth TV uh, um, podcast show. He did Call to the Booth, and then he announced his retirement on there. And, you know, next thing you know, he, he in the booth calling games for, <laughs> I think, uh, was Fox. it CBS or NBC? Yeah, I think it's Fox. He's doing a great job. I got to hear his first game, I think, for, uh, for the Lions game. What have you been up to in retirement? Could you still play if a team was like, hey – LeGarrette, we got a Super Bowl run in us. We need about five games. Marshawn Lynch was serving tequila in the parking lot of an <laughs> Oakland Raiders game, and then two weeks later he was starting for the Seahawks. So I'm not saying it hasn't been done. Could you still got in? What have you been up to in retirement here? Oh yeah. Um I feel <laughs> like if I put if I put the uh if I put the work in to to get back to, you know, fully dedicating myself to football and, and getting out there and playing a Playing a you know a good game or two, uh, I think I could do it. I'm I'm 100 sure I could do it. Well, I'm looking at some like of the backs in the league right now uh, for some of these teams, and these are young guys. Um, and after like yeah, af after seeing it a little bit, I 100 can come back there and be effective. <laughs> what have you been up to in retirement? Are you I'm doing not business? Not anybody. That's just me. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You definitely took a shot at a bunch of people there, but we we won't go through all of that. Uh, we don't have to start naming names. What have you been doing in retirement, LeGarrette? Um, you know, I've been I've been spending a lot more time with my family. Um, I get to I get to take my son to football. You know, to every Tuesday and Thursday, watch him play on Saturdays. Um, I get to go to my daughter's cheer competitions. You know, I get to play with my I get to play with my three year old. You know, during the during the day a lot. Um, you know, uh, being a being in, being around more often and being able to you know, do what, you know, what you want to do as far as like family time or, you know, just time with the wifey or anything like that and being able to do it. Uh, it's a different feeling, man. It, it feels really good. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at. It's interesting, isn't it? Because football is so encompassing of your life. I mean, it's six months straight of Groundhog's Day whenever the season's happening. Every day is the same exact day. It's like, here we go. We're in it. Then the off season happens. And you get like a month a month and a half, maybe, unless you're getting a surgery. And if you get a surgery, then you're right back into it to the next year. You get a month and a half, and you have to try to turn off the season, which takes a couple weeks. Then you have, like, two weeks of freedom where you get to hang out with your family. And then, bang, OTAs are back in there. And then, boom, you're right back in it. I don't think people understand, like, the commitment it takes to be in the NFL is a real one. Not just for you, but for your family as well. It's a real thing. It's like clockwork. No. No, I don't think a lot of people understand that. Uh, I think a lot of people that, that that don't see the inside of it, they think that you just show up in training camp, play till January, you're done, and then you show up in training camp again. Like now, like you know, obviously you know about the OTAs, you know about off season workouts, you know about you know the voluntary, you know, <laughs> um, showing up for the for the workouts and for the uh, off season program. Um, all of that, all of that, you know, that plays a factor in, you know, how good you can be in the league. So, you know, I think that I think that people don't really appreciate that that time that we actually put into it because it's literally a 24 seven job. Like you have to that's your sole focus. Yeah. And it's it, you hear every Hall of Famer that speaks, by the way, every Hall of Famer that gives a speech always says to their kid and to their wife. 
that they wish they were around more. It's not like some Hall of Famers. It's basically every single Hall of Famer is like, thank you to my wife for holding it down. My kids, I wish I was around more. But it's a commitment to be great. Now, let's right. talk about you've had a couple of different stops, okay? And everybody talks about the commitment it takes to be a Patriot. What is the biggest difference whenever you were at the Patriots as opposed to the other places you're at? Because you're at successful organizations as well. So it wasn't just like you were at the Patriots and then some bum-ass teams. You were on some good teams. What was it like as the Patriots? And what is like the, you know, the Bill Belichick Patriot way as somebody who's been around? What's so different up there? I say, you know, the difference is just the culture in general. Um, when, uh, losing is not accepted. Winning is expected and you know there is just you know i feel like that's probably just the the basics of it you know obviously you know bill has different coaching strategies than other guys you know for instance one thing that he says a lot since like every every year that i was there um one thing that i hear, heard him say a lot you know we're going to play good football we're going to weather the storm but it doesn't really start till after thanksgiving you know and that was the first time i ever heard that um and obviously, you know, when, once you realize what he's talking about, he's talking about, you know, your big division games, um, you know, all the games that's going to count towards the long run um, and that's going to count in the stretch. Um, you know, he, he's talking about those games. So I just think that philosophy of, you know, 60 minutes of pure football, um, no matter what the score is, no matter what the outcome is, you know, they just want you to grind that 60 minutes of football um, and do everything the right way. You know, I know they call it the Patriot way, but uh, they want you to do everything the right way. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, dig deep into your game plan or your or your playbook, um, you know, be super early whenever, you know, whenever you need to be there or, you know, just a, just little things like that, little details like that, you know, um, as far as Bill and the Patriot way. I think that yeah. that's, you know, that's one of the things that stick out the most. You know, I don't think they have um, – I don't think a lot of teams have that curriculum or that, you know, the coach to give off that kind of discipline to their players, you know, because he has a lot of respect. Yeah, you got to have a resume if you're going to try to instill that. I think a lot of his yeah. uh, a lot of his assistants have tried to go elsewhere and be like, hey, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we did in the Patriots. And all players look at him and it's like, nah, you haven't won a goddamn gotta, thing. You got to have a respectable coach, you know what I'm saying, that you feel like if you buy in, it's going to be a good outcome. You know, and, and, and a lot of guys don't have that respect or that that trust in a lot of the coaches, you know. So that's, you know, some some places where that goes wrong. Do you remember running for like 600 yards against the Colts that one night? It was like, uh, it was, I, I forget the first, we're, you were in your own end. It might have been a third and one you were brought in because you were the big smashing back, but you could also cut and make, to be honest, Derrick Henry is a great comparison for the type of runner that you were for a very long time. And I would assume that that is not a knock in your eyes. That's probably, I would oh, assume. No, not at all. I mean, I feel yeah. like he's probably the, he's top three back in the league right now, you know, and, and, you know, he's big. Well, he's huge and he's yeah. fast and he's strong. Uh, you know, he doesn't take a lot of big hits, you know, um, obviously I don't know who's going to want to deliver a big hit to him, you know, um, but, He's he's just he's I, I would say that you know that's probably the best comparison. The only thing I would say is that he's probably a little bit, and when I say a little bit, I'm saying like <laughs> <laughs> tiny bit, tiny bit, yeah, tiny, tiny, tiny much bit. faster than I am. <laughs> 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 just that much. I mean, you know, I don't, I haven't seen, I haven't had a lot of runs in the, you know, in my time in the league where I got caught from behind. Um, you know, usually if I get if I get past that second level, I'm gonna probably get there. Um, and he's the same way. And he's huge. Um, you know, he's fast. He's strong. And he's just – he has that mentality that he's not going to let anyone take him down, especially not any one person. You know, he 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 runs with that chip on his shoulder. I mean, they call him King Henry for a, re uh, King Henry for a reason. It's a great nickname. It also is very real. I, I wish you would have done, like, the uh... – the the B buzzer hair whenever you brought your uh, dreads back there like because that thing seems like he has a, a an actual weapon hanging from the yeah I don't know how he does it I, I don't know how he I, does it either I've never <laughs> you know what I got the dreads and I've had a, a a few different styles I've never had that one I don't know I've, I've never, never had, had dreads but I, I do I believe like, that I, I like don't know if I'd be able tight. to pull it off it is very tight um, I'm happy walking around that, like this. 
<laughs> Just oh, his eyebrows is getting pulled back. But the helmet, I, I, the I, I helmet, the dread room. guys, I always enjoyed whenever the dread guys got their haircuts and the equipment managers would be so pissed off. Like, all right, come get your fucking helmet remeasured, all right? <laughs> Got to redo this entire thing. Derrick Henry with that. I'm excited for that. The um, uh, like Garrett, whenever you talk about running backs and you talk about Derrick Henry, it always feels like the running backs, whenever it comes to business conversations, all right, it always gets, like, thrown to the side. Now, granted, Christian McCaffrey got broken off, right? Well, Derrick yeah, Henry got money. I think he's got franchise tag or whatever, yeah. maybe signed a deal. Why is it like that? Is it because of how many hits you guys take, you think, okay. or – yeah. I, I think, think I think is, you know, the lifespan of a of a of a running back in the NFL isn't long. You know, and that's that's from the beginning of the NFL to now. You know, that's that's never been a position that's been a fifteen year career or whatever it is. You know, granted, you know, we've had, you know, Emmett Smiths and Adrian Petersons and Frank Gores and, you know, those guys, but you know, um, the running back position is is usually you know not a longevity position, and you know I don't I don't know why it's not respected enough. But I mean, if you look at if you look at you know the statistics, the, the teams that are really 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 good are able to run the football really really well. You know what I'm saying? So I think that I think that they it, the the running back position should stop getting overlooked as far as you know from the business side, as far as the paying side. I think if these guys work hard and they grind and they do your your team a, a great service and they, you know, put their head down, they come to work every day, they grind and never they're not a problem, you know, um, and they're doing everything that you ask for them to do on the field, and you know, I feel like that's that's granted for you know that's that's place for a reward, you know. I feel like you should get your pay. I feel like you should get your check. I feel like the team should, you know, put that respect behind you and, you know put that trust and believe in you to let you know that, Hey, we got your back, you know? So I think a lot of teams don't do that. I think a lot of teams just let their, you know, if, if you got a, if you got a nice running back, they think that in the next couple of years, they might be another nice running back like you or another nice running back like you, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. to this day, I don't think the Eagles have been able to replace me. And to this day, I don't think the Patriots have been able to replace me. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Woo! I like that a lot. I'm a big fan. Now, listen, I haven't looked into it deep enough, but I'm going to take you at your word. They fucking <laughs> have it. And it's bullshit, LeGarrette. They have not been able to replace you since you've left, and it is absolute bullshit. Whenever you were at the Patriots and when you were at the Eagles, it was awesome to watch. I mean, because it was just thump, thump, thump. And then, like you said, whenever you get to that second level, it was just like you never got caught. It made no sense. You were a defensive end running down the field faster than corners <laughs> and safeties, and nobody wanted to hit you. It made no sense. But – when you were at the Patriots, the running back position was paramount. Okay, to that Josh McDaniels, Tom Brady offense, the running back position was huge. Okay, you you were a huge part of that offense. What's that? Sixteen season. What's that? Especially with that four game suspension in the in the beginning of that 2016 season. Yeah, whenever uh, Jacoby and Jimmy G were in or whatever, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a big I run like, game. But I even like I, I think cool even like other game. than that, though, Legarrette, I think even other than that, Legarrette, I think. That offense with McDaniels and Tom, it revolves around, like, being able to run the ball and play action. You look at what Tom's doing now down in uh, Tampa. It's a very different-looking offense. Have you been paying attention to that situation between Tom and Bruce? How do you see that playing out? Do you think Tom is inevitably going to be like, hey, during this bye week, this is what I need to change? Do you think they'll be able to do that? Or what do you think is going on down there? And is it all because they don't run the ball nearly enough? Um, I think the times they haven't run the ball is when the times they got in trouble. Um I think that Ronald Jones kid is, is 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 a really 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 good running back. I don't think he get the credit that he deserves. Um, I mean, I don't know a lot of guys. I know it's happened before, but there's not a lot of running backs that's breaking. You know, that's breaking 98 yard touchdown runs and you know um, getting 100 yard games. You know, back to back and you know catching the football. Um, I think he's really 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 fun to watch. You know, anywhere is number 27. You know, so <laughs> Respect. I wore that when I was in Tampa also, but. Um, you know, I think that I think, you know, one of their one of the biggest problems is, you know, whenever you do put yourself in the position to where you can't run the football, you might run the football three times and, you know, whatever you might be down 10-0, the panic might set in and that might take out the run game. Um, I think you I think you feed that kid. I think you feed him a lot. 
Uh, I think I think Tom has to make better throws, better decisions. You know, and that's my guy. I love him to death. You know, I still talk to him to this day. Um, I think he has to make better decisions and better throws. But, you know, even, you know, everybody expects him to be, you know, this lifesaver. And don't get me wrong. He is. You know, he the GOAT. But you go from 18, 19, 20 years with one place and then you go to somewhere else. That's like me going to a new place. That's like anyone going to a new spot. You got to relearn everything. You know, and I think uh, it's just, you know, his first season. I think this is their first season, and they're just trying to learn as they go. You didn't get the traditional off-season workouts and OTAs and all of that stuff to prepare. They started, you know, I don't know when they started, but. I, You know, I, I seen a story about somebody going into the wrong house. <laughs> oh, I don't know. So I don't know when they technically started, but but I know that they didn't have the traditional window of time that everyone else gets. So, you know, they're learning on the move and they're trying to fix mistakes on the go. Um, but I think him and BA will definitely get it right. I think they'll fix it. You know, I think Tom has a lot of say so in that offense and what they do and they respect him enough to let him do so. So I think him and BA will sit down and figure it out. I think they'll be getting better moving forward. Hey, last question before we let you go and can't thank you enough for joining us here, LeGarrette. You're one of our – we are big fans of yours on our show, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm Do a big you... fan of yours, man, even though a lot of people ain't, ain't fans of, of, of Punish, so you know who said. <laughs> wow, what? <laughs> what did you say? I, I said I'm a big fan too, you know, even though Punish and Kickers don't get a lot of fans, but I support all y'all. Hey, hey, Woo! see, I appreciate yeah, that, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. And hey, whenever we talk about – whenever team, we talk man, about the don't important... get enough respect. Yeah, you're goddamn right. Let's talk about respect, though. You're <laughs> – you're, um, I think you don't get enough respect for your playing days because of the shit that popped off off the field, right? Like, I think that is in some people's mind, Bro. right? As soon as they as soon as they hear LeGarrette Blunt, they're like, well, this, this, and this. It's like, yeah, but how about this, 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 and this? I would assume that was something that when it happened, you immediately – and not the thing in Pittsburgh and then in college and everything like that. Now, granted, I've got caught up in shit, too. Everybody does. But it feels like whenever your name gets mentioned, it's never about how good of a football player you are. Does that piss you off ever? Does that ever become something um, that makes you? Sometimes it kind of, it kind of, it'll get to me a little bit. Um, not too often, you know. I know what I've done in this league. I know my resume. I know, you know, how important I've been on some teams. Um, I know, you know, the grind that I've put into it, the time I've put into it, the effort I've put into it. Um, I know that, you know, it's, 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 I get well, I get, you know, appreciations and support and all that stuff from, family members from friends you know i get more support than i do than than not um for my playing days uh from from people that are close to me you know i get a lot of obviously if you're a new england fan or if you're a philly fan or if you're a bucks fan i get a lot of love from those from those uh those fans and those fan bases but um anyone else outside of that yeah it's, it's not a lot of people that that really respect what i've done you know the 18 touchdown season, two, two 1,000 yard seasons in a nine year career, Woo! undrafted running back. You know, I'm undrafted and I led, I led all rookies in rushing. You know, I felt like I was the, I felt like I was the best running back to come out of that draft class. Um, you know, and I felt like I was the last one standing. The the thing about that is, I think those who know know, right? Like those who know, know. like the right. the people that matter know. Right, like players in the NFL, people have seen you, right. the fans who've seen you work, they know. But I feel like you never get really brought up in the conversation of great backs. And it's like Dominic Rhodes was another guy, undrafted running back that never gets talked yeah. about that was also dominant, you know? He's a thousand yard guy too, I think. Yeah. Undrafted yeah, rookie. Free agent rookie, right? Yeah, yeah. Undrafted, went yeah. to Peyton's offense, became a favorite over there. Dommy's a favorite in Indianapolis still to this day. It's like, I don't think you ever get talked about enough whenever they talk about greats at the running back position. I got a chance to watch you do it, so I appreciate your time. Quick follow-up, though, to the off. Did you ever talk to that dude that you just knocked the <laughs> fuck out? I mean, that guy, that was one of the cleanest knockouts I've seen in history. So I'm going to <laughs> so tell you, I, I, I talked to him. I talked to him once. Good. That's smart. It was. It was. It was. It was right after the incident. Um, we got back. Me and me and Chip um, talked a little bit. We figured out, you know, what was the next step to take um, in this process. You know, which I feel like I was done unjustly, but for being suspended for an entire season. You know, I've seen people do way, way worse that only you know sat out for a game. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, <laughs> 
No, I feel like I no, I, I honestly I I feel like they um I don't think that I would I would say I don't think that you know as as far as my respect and as far as you know what I've done in the league, you know I don't I don't think that people really look at look at that anymore. You know what I'm saying? They've Agreed. seen me Agreed. for nine years in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? But as far Completely as that, agree. like I talked so back to that, I talked to him on the phone the next day. I called Coach, me and Chip Kelly called Coach Peterson, and we called him. And I, I apologized to Coach Peterson about what happened, um, and I apologized to him about what happened. And we've never spoken since. But you know, I feel like I feel like I was owed an apology too because of how it happened and what was you know what made it transpire. I feel like I was owed an apology and I never got that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm cool with that. You know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, like Coach Peterson and him know what was said and what led to that. You know what I'm saying? But I, I called. I apologized. I was the bigger man. I called and I apologized to both of them. Um, and I you know, I haven't talked to him since. You know, I have no ill will or no hard feelings towards him at all or anything. But <laughs> I'm not saying. Listen, I think your NFL career has been amazing. But you never heard about the fact that you called and apologized for that, by the way. Like, you never heard about that side of the story. You know what I mean? The only thing yeah, you saw I called was and apologized that, and to him and the coach the next day. Hey, you're a good dude, man. You're great on the football field, too. It was awesome watching. Now, granted, it sucked a couple times when I was on the other sideline, obviously, just watching you go. But you were the man, man dude. No awesome feelings, to watch you, you know play. What I'm saying? I feel like I got about, over the course of my career, I don't think I've ever played against the coach and I had a 100-yard game. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Hey. No, you fucking scored three against us. I think one night. I think you literally scored three touchdowns. Four three touchdowns. Four. You scored four. Yeah, I think I, I think I think I did three one year and four one year. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, listen, uh, you didn't have a hundred yard game. Think, I'm sorry, you scored fault. fucking twenty eight points against us in one game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not your fault, man. Hey, you can't, there, you can't come out there and do anything about it. You know. Well, by I the mean, way, if I was out there, it probably could, but it probably wouldn't turn out well. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. If I was out there and you were running, I was going the opposite direction. For I would have got blocked or you know tripped or something. That would have had to happen. We some, appreciate some, your time, some, man. Some Philip to... Rivers type stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't you ever put that on me, please? Don't you I ever put not. that on me? I hope not. Oh, I hope I hope you're way more athletic than that, Pat. I, hope you're way more <laughs> I couldn't believe what I saw right there. I'm gonna just blame that on his age. Yeah, that's – well, if I have nine kids and I live to that age, I'll be excited to see what I can do. But, like, Garrett, I hope we get a chance to talk to you again, man. You were awesome. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Pat. I really, really appreciate it, man. Thank you guys for having me on. No problem, man. Just – I can't wait to see what you end up doing. Not not that you need to do anything publicly or anything like that, but you're a, you're an intriguing guy, man. You were so good and so t- – like, it was just – you were uh, – you're a generational like player, dude. You really were. And now Derrick Henry's kind of taking over the world, and you were that before that, and it never gets talked about. I appreciate that, man. Thanks a lot, man. And, and thank you guys for having me on. Hey, man, shout out to Derrick Henry, man. Keep doing your thing, bro. And, uh, you know, I hope, hope I hope Le'Veon get more carries in Kansas City because that's <laughs> my guy. And, I, I, and he is one of the nicest running backs for me, like, to see with my own eyes. He's probably one of the nicest backs I've ever seen with the rock in his hand and without the rock in his hand. Hey, he's starting to heat up, too. They're starting to give him the ball more. He's starting to see some things more. I think he's starting to get more comfortable. It's only a matter of time, I think, over there. Right in time for that playoff run. They're doing it right. (laughs) Gase tried to kill him. (laughs) Gase tried to kill him over there. I mean, I don't know what happened, but it seems like he just kind of fell off. Yeah, I don't even know. I, I and to this day, I asked him. I don't even know why he ever, would ever even go there. Like I don't even. <laughs> it, had be, is it-, it had to be one hundred percent because of marketing in New York. That's the only thing I can think of because <laughs> I don't know anybody in their right mind that would just voluntarily go play for Adam <laughs> Gates. I just don't. <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Legarrett Blunt. Thank you, Legarrett. Man, that was awesome. Appreciate you, man. Oh my God, that was amazing. That was amazing, dude. Legend. Pat, he had uh, he had 166 uh, yards the one game in the four touchdown game, and then he had 148 yards in the three touchdown game. Whew. Yeah, dude. And what was his long? There was one that was like a third and one, and he popped off. I think for like 80 yards or 75 yards or something. I he said he never scored 100 or ran for 100. I'm like, I I remember your big ass running by me on the <laughs> sideline, literally going like, How is this guy running faster than everybody? Oh, and he just did it again. Oh, it. 
and he did it again. There it, just, it was it was a Legarrette Blunt show while I was playing. It was and it was unstoppable by the way. There's literally nothing you could do about it. It was like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna get four people to tackle him? Well then somebody else it was just he was awesome to watch whenever he played, dude. He was awesome to watch. I'm glad you brought up that uh, fight too, because to this day, you know, I still haven't heard that story, and I like I remember watching that live when he knocked that guy out. So that's interesting, you know, that he called and apologized the next day, and haven't heard anything about that in you know ten years, fifteen years. Never heard about the apology. And by the way, I didn't want to dive into what he said. I would assume that also rather terrible, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I, I would assume that was never talked about either. Nope. So it's like I'm, I'm happy we got a chance to talk about it. 